Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video I'm going to show you how to make a simple holly leaf pendant. This is a great little gift that you can give to your wife or husband or significant other. Usually wives like to wear pendants. Sometimes men like little trinkety things too, so don't rule us out. We're just going to start by putting a taper on the end of this bar. Now, as you can see, this is a piece of flat stock. This is a piece of 3 16 by 3 quarter inch flat stock. Or in other words, this is 20 millimeter by, uh, just looked at it, it was like 4.5 millimeter if you're looking for a conversion. So you could get away with 4 mil and 20 mil. So that's it for that. We got the first tip there. Most of this is going to be exactly like uh, making a leaf, if you will. So we're going to go here first, then we're going to go to the horn, and we're going to neck down a certain little bit of area, and then move on progressively from there. Okay, so now we're going to the horn, and we're going to stick this taper out just over the edge of the start of the curve of the horn. And hammer straight down. Work both sides. And stretch that stem right on out. Later on, we're going to forge this down a lot more, but we need to leave it thick for right now. So leave it fairly thick at this juncture. Take the sharpness off, and there we go. Here's our start of it. Next step, we'll come out here to the anvil, and we're going to spread this leaf in this direction. Don't want to grow too much in length. We just want to keep. We just want to spread this material out nice and broad, like. Again, that's about two inches or 50 mil there, and uh, about of material sticking out beyond the edge of the where this first curve is on the horn of the anvil. And that'll create that really nice set down. We don't want any sharp corners like doing it at the edge because if you do, there's a high risk when we draw this material down to snap that off. So we don't want that. We don't want to have any stress fractures. So now that we've got this leaf segregated, now we're going to add the scalloping. The easiest way to do this is with a guillotine tool, but if you don't have a guillotine tool, you can always use a, how do I want to say, if you don't have a guillotine tool, you can always take and just use a regular fuller or you can grind in these little scallops or file them in on the edges of the leaf. Uh, it's not super critical, uh, you know, how you get it done, but you get, just want the scallops in here. Just make sure it's right each time and give it a good whack. So the secret behind these is you want to go about 3 8 inch on center, or 9.5 mil on center in between scalloping. This here is 3 8 in of itself, and so therefore you want to take Sorry, there's a mower going by, a piece of tractor equipment. You want this to be matching this 3 8 inch here. Sorry, I had to wait for that to go by. So like I was saying, this is 3 8 fullering here, so you want to space it off about that, and that'll give you peaks instead of like mounds. You don't want mounds, you want peaks. You want the curves of each to end up peaking out if you can. So we'll get this good and hot again. And we'll keep fullering in until those peaks, we get them sharp peaks, and then we'll flatten everything out on the surface of the anvil, and that'll give us what we're looking for.
Okay, so now that we've got those divots in there done, we're going to use the cross peen of our hammer to pull out those little divots a little bit better, or the little peaks out a little bit better. You can do that with the cross peen of your hammer to just bend down those edges. And then just use the flat of the hammer to clean everything up. As you can see, a lot of this is just a little kind of fiddly work. You know, you don't want to go too crazy with it. So there we go. So we got the starts of a holly leaf now. So now the next step is we're going to go ahead and form this. We're going to form this in the crook of the, the anvil horn here. That'll allow us to get a fold on this. And then we're going to tighten up that fold a bit. And I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. But we have to fold this up basically or fold it in half in order to do the rest of this project. But before we do any of that, we are going to help our little fold by chiseling in some lines. We're gonna do that now with a cold chisel and we're gonna do it cold or roughly hot. You know, it's still hot, but we're gonna basically do it at a cool temperature or a black heat. We're gonna take and chisel in a line. This line's gonna do two things for us. This is gonna help dictate where that fold's gonna happen. And it's a lot easier to do this now than it is later on once everything is kind of fold and raised and stuff, you won't be able to get back in here very easily and get really nice straight lines. So again, this is just a holly leaf, so we're not gonna go too crazy a lab it with our chisel lines. We're gonna add in some, but not a whole bunch. We're just trying to add in a few there, like three. That's what we're gonna go for. Let me punch in on this. Hopefully you guys can still see that and that still makes sense to you. So I did three out that side and now I'm gonna go ahead and do three out the other side. Kind of line them up. Again, you don't have to go for gold on these or anything. Just make them look believable. So there we have it. Now onto the folding. Okay, so using a flat piece like so, that's of the same material bar thickness, set in there, I'm gonna lay it on the anvil, and we wanna keep this in there for a moment. So this way, this will help us, if you will, this will help us keep that open. We wanna keep just the top open. You don't have to keep the whole thing open, we're just looking for that top part to be open while we tighten up the bottom. Okay? That stops it from completely closing up on you. So when you open this up, when you actually try to open this up, you're not trying to get in there and carve in with a chisel. Just by putting that little piece in there, that really helps you out. So this way you can come just straight to the anvil edge then and give it a few whacks and that thing will open up real naturally like. So we'll go ahead and get that hot again and I'll be right back with you. Uh, again, real quick, I just wanted to mention this. I did switch to using a much smaller, finer cross peen than my larger cross peen. This is where you wanna to switch to a much lighter and smaller hammer. Uh, tinier cross peen, the better uh, for this type of work. We're just trying to we're trying to form the piece. We're not really trying to forge the piece. We're not trying to change its cross section. We're trying to form its cross section. So once that's hot, I'll bring it back out and we'll do what we've said at the anvil. Okay, now we'll go to the edge of the anvil, line it up like as if it was on a corner. 
Go ahead and hammer that straight down and in. And you can start seeing that start to unfold. Lay it flat on the anvil. Get a few more little hammers. Don't take this all the way back down to flat though. That's not our, that's not our intentions here. Got a little twist started in this thing, but that's okay, we're gonna forge that out. We just wanna take and give it some form. So that, just like that, that's how easy that, that holly leaf is there. Now, I'm going to turn this into a bit of a pendant uh, or a Christmas ornament. It could be a Christmas ornament. I'm gonna turn it into a pendant, but you can stop the video right now if you needed to and go do this part or whatever else you wanna do with this end. This is a neat leaf all in of itself. But we're gonna take it a little bit further. And the way we're gonna take this a little bit further is I'm gonna heat it up, we're gonna chop it off right about here, and we're gonna draw all this material out into a stem. That's why we really didn't want a sharp angle in here, because if you had a real sharp angle, all this time we would have been putting a lot of stress there, and by the time you go to draw it out, it's gonna snap off. So that's why we don't want that sharp angle. So I'll get this hot again. Be careful of burning up your leaf. I'm gonna get this hot again, chop it off, and start drawing out that stem. Okay, after you get that all drawn out, then we wanna lay this on the anvil, we're gonna bring this leaf back to, and now comes the fun part. We're wanting to take and turn this thing into a bit of a pendant. So you could do this a lot of different ways. You could work it over the horn of the anvil, or you can use a pair of scrolling tongs. Now my favorite way is using a pair of scrolling tongs and preferably a torch if you can do it. We're gonna create our first bend there, I'll hammer that back down on itself. Work the piece. Scrolling tongs and a torch really make this a dream to do this. Uh, but again, you have to work with what you got. If all you've got is your anvil, you can most certainly do it there. There's the first little pigtail on it, and we'll just heat this up again. Obviously, you see if you lock the leaf in a vise or something like that and use a torch, you can have a lot of control and a lot of say how this turns out. So we're gonna go ahead and heat this up one more time and then keep scrolling this up. Okay, so once you've got that bent up exactly the way you like it, go ahead and get in there with a wire brush. Add a nice dull orange to bright red heat. 
and go ahead and brush that up real good. Now you want to be careful with it because you can end up moving that thing around. You got to be careful because I've done it already here. Probably didn't even notice it, but you got to be careful. You can move, undo all that twisted and stuff you just did. This portion here, this is where it just comes down to your own artistic sensibilities. Whatever you want to do for that, uh, you know, be your own guest. Do whatever you'd like to do. You can brass brush this like I'm doing here, hitting the highs, or you could do the whole piece and really get the whole thing brassed heavily. Uh, I like to just do the highs if I can. I think it gives better contrast that way versus the whole thing being basically brass brushed. We'll just do that real quick. The whole thing a quick little brass brushing. And since this is going to be worn across the body, I suggest using something like a Rust-Oleum or a natural finish, like a coconut oil or something of that nature. Uh, if you use a Rust-Oleum, it's better against eventually rusting against the skin or anything like that. But you can see how that really makes that thing pop, hopefully. So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed, really enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check out the guide to 10 hand forged Christmas gifts uh, over at blacksmithpdfs.com. In, uh, in that, you'll have a complete cost breakdown, how much time estimated it is to make one of these start to finish, how much materials in it, your profit, what you can sell it for, um, all that good stuff, and all your SEOs already figured out. Uh, it's an ebook that Jessica and I are selling, and you know I'm producing some how-to tutorials around it. Also, there will be high-end photographs of the actual item, so you kind of have a way of uh, telling where you're going with it. Uh, but if you like to support the channel and support Jessica and I and what we do, that's a great way of doing it. Uh, you know, the link for that blacksmithpdfs.com will be down in the description. Well, without further ado, I'm going to let you go watch some more videos on YouTube or head over to the website and get you one of these uh, great plans or one of the Power Hammer plan bundles or something that we got over there. And as always, like the video if you liked it, and God bless you. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.